Hi, I'm Adam from EnglishAcorn.com. In this video we're going to look at the top menu part of Construct 2, of the main hub. So if I open up Construct 2, the part I'm talking about is this one up here where you have the file, home, view and events. Above this you do have some options which are to run your layout and debug your layout. We'll get on to debugging and running your layout, which basically is the layout that you're, ga uh, that you're on within your game. We'll get into these in a future video. Um, you'll notice that when I first open Construct that I met with this start page. Now to turn this off you can go, or to close this sorry, you can go up to this tab here and you click on the cross like you would with most um, tabbed items and this gets rid of it. To open it up again you make sure that the home tab is clicked at the top and you go over to the start page go button, this little house, click on it and it opens up the start page. There is some sensitive information about my licensing at the bottom, basically my email address and my name, so I'm not going to scroll down here, but you can actually scroll up and down all the way down to the bottom um, and view certain bits of information about your recent projects, other projects and the included examples um, within Construct 2. I apologise if I have to briefly pause this video at times or if you notice a cut off. There is a lot of traffic outside my house and due to the noise and trying to reduce the noise I end up pausing it from time to time. Anyway, continuing on. First let's look at this part. Under the Home tab you can see there are different elements here. Clipboard, Undo, Selection, Configuration, Online, Preview and Go. If I just close the Start page, go to File and click on New, then click on New Empty Project, I've just opened up a new project. If I hold down Control and scroll the mouse wheel down I will zoom back out uh, to get a, a large overview of my layout. Now I've done that so that I can access a few options at the top. Under selection you can see that there's a select all. This would select all the objects you have in your layout if you clicked on it. Um, we don't have any at the moment so it's not really selecting anything. Displaying, you can't actually change this because you always display HTML5 or for the majority of time you always have as HTML5 if you can when you watch this video you have the option to change it. These other options, for example, skira.com, forums and help, as well as uh, skira store, they link to online websites, I, mainly the skira.com website, their store, their forum and their manual, the Construct 2 manual. This button here, which says run layout, runs the layout that you're viewing, debug layout, there's the same but it creates um, something underneath um, your project which views the variables, the different bits of information that are running in the background so you can use it to debug your game and export your project, exports it into different formats. So for example here I've just clicked on, I've just clicked on export and it's taking me here. So I just click on cancel. Okay if we click on file at the top you'll be met with a drop down menu where you can start a new layout as I did before, open one, save or close, even export. There are two types of um, save. One is to save as a single file, which is to save all your game assets uh, within a single file. Game assets are things, for example, like sprites, animation, music, sound, um, and they will all be saved within a single file. As your game progresses, obviously this file will get larger and larger, so with large games sometimes it's advisable to save as a project, which will save each individual part of your game within files to where you designate it to save. Now if you look at the bottom you've got this store button again, the help button, the about button, the exit menu button and the preferences button. Um, these th three are very similar to up here as we covered before and the preferences opens a set of options i.e. preferences for the game. So clicking on that we're met with this box. Currently I have the colour set to grey so this may be slightly different colour to you, This the outline of the box. Okay so the general settings you layout view. Most of this is quite straightforward and I don't really need to explain it but this resizes the size of the handles which are basically small squares around the objects you include in game. For example if I click on cancel I double click to open up the insert new object screen. Let's click on sprite. Click somewhere to import, well not import but create it in your layout. Let's move this to the side, click on this paintbrush here, I'm just going to quickly draw a little blob. Okay. Now now that's drawn, you'll notice that these squares are of a certain size and if I go to file, then back to preferences, come to resize handle size and put small, okay, you'll notice that these are now small. So that's what that does, it changes the size of these handles 
which you can use to change elements about the objects within your game. Now the event sheet view, this refers to the font type and the size of the font of the event sheet. We'll come to event sheets in a later video, but this is how you change it if you're finding it hard to see the text. Now startup, these are options where you can show your startup page or close a startup page and check for um, close a startup page when I click on something, basically it closes it automatically. You can also check for updates for Construct 2. The current release is R171. Okay. On the top we also have preview, which is where you preview, you choose which internet browser you preview your game. Mine's currently set to Chrome and I've also got a default export folder which is my desktop. When you preview on your computer, if you're not exporting, you preview via um, a preview server which is created on your local host. You can actually create this to view it on another server so that it's technically um, on a LAN, but at the moment, uh, or the default settings to view it on your local host on your computer. You, need, uh, you can only run um, some JavaScript environments, whether online or offline with a server and some without a server so sometimes it may be worth using a private server or creating your own server with something like web matrix 3 to to test out your games now auto saving is important and normally you have it enable auto save every time period the frequency I, ha I have is 20 minutes and this auto saves your game to the location that you've saved it you this this comes into effect after you've clicked on file save as file or save as project backup, it's worth backing up and I back up my games to two different places, a Skira, um, sorry Skira, a Dropbox location and I save it to that file then upload it automatically to Dropbox and also another place on my hard drive in my document setting. Um, these are just options concerning that. Under MISC we've got help links and this is to auto detect help links when you when you are writing things. So for example if I come to the event sheet here and I double click, click on the system um, icon, come down to the right and click on the on start layout, then I click on add action and I want to do something but I don't know what, so for example I click on sprite. Um, I still don't know what, I can see there's a link at the bottom, for me it's in blue and it says help on sprite action. I click on that and I'm taken to the Construct 2 manual, online manual. Um, it automatically finds a page that it thinks or it believes is relevant for me and it takes me there. This um, auto detect refers to that. Um, so using the online manual is a recommended instance. It will provide the most up to date information and it will auto detect what I need. So I can, I can always choose to use, always use the offline manual or always use the online manual. Uh, sorry, it's auto te detecting um, whether I'm using it offline uh, or online depending on my internet connection. Okay. Um, other options uh, such as cache and icon, I have mine selected, you may not. Um, and here under colors you can actually change the theme color. Um, so you have a variety, I've got mine set to default. To change a theme you choose one such as dark grey and you click on load selected theme. Um, click on OK, click on OK and you notice that the background color of my event sheet has now changed to dark grey. So I'll click on to file and click on preferences and click on colors and click on default then click on load select theme to go back to what it was originally. Okay now if we go to the top under the view tab we're met with other things. On the left you can view all the different bars so the status bar which is this thing here ready at the bottom it says ready for me it gives you information about the status of different things so for example at the moment it just says um, I have one event sheet I'm on the active layer which is this one here and this is my mouse um, position. So you can get rid of that if you want to create some room at the bottom. You can actually get rid of all of these boxes just by ticking them away. So it's quite straightforward and they reappear if you tick them. So if I were to say, for example, take this layers um, tab, actually, sorry, take this layers tab and pull it out and put it in the center of the screen and then I get rid of it. If I want to bring it back, I simply check the box that's related to that thing I want. In this case it's layers. I right click and click on tab document to untab it and it sends it back here to the right. All of these things you can actually pull away and put back and you can view them again from here. You can zoom in with the control and scroll wheel or you can click on zoom in or zoom out, zoom to 100 
to change the zoom level that you want. Uh, you can snap and you can create a grid for your items. For example, if I have show grid, I show a grid of which I've set here. So let's change the height to 64 and the grid width to 200. So I clicked on show grid and show grid again for it to change, take effect. If I click to the snap grid, then when I drag when I drag my objects around, they snap to the grid intersections where my object's hotspot is, which is in the center. So this is fairly straightforward. I can also change the style of my the Construct2 hub. So for example, if I click on basic style, now it's changed everything to a basic style. I have to try and remember which one I was using. I think it could, uh, is it office? I can't remember. Um, okay, so I found out um, I was using Os Office 2010 Blue, um, so I've changed it back. Okay, um, if you have an object which has collisions, you can actually show those collisions in um, in the layout editor by clicking this um, box here, Show Collision Polygons, and it's demonstrated by a red line. If I double click on this object and click down here this is where I can change the collision so if I just change it just so you can see how it's changed in the layout editor as well I'll come on to objects in a later video um, some layers are translucent so translucent inactive layers you can highlight if you have any now going at the top to the events this refers to my event sheet and depends um, it's, it's for each event sheet so once I click on the event sheet, you'll notice that all of these are present. Now I can add events here, I can place bookmarks, and I can edit those bookmarks, or I can search for certain things within the code. Um, I can do all these things from this top bar, menu bar. I can do some of these also if I right click um, within the event sheet, but if you get lost and you don't know what to do, or you want to do something but you can't find the option, if you look at the top, it, it should... Um, you should find the option up there. Okay, in the next video, I hope to look at the properties bar, what it is, um, everything um, about it. I'll Thank you very much for watching this video. Um, I hope it hasn't been too long or, or awkward. Um, if you like this video, please like it at the bottom. Please subscribe if you want to, and please view the other videos. Please leave a comment in the comment section of this video if you'd like to ask any questions, and I may be able to answer them. Thank you very much.